So welcome back to Totally Integrated Instrumentation. This is the second part of our Surex 522 video. So um, please watch the first part. I'll uh, put the link uh, into the uh, comments so you can some watch that. So we've already integrated the Surex into the PLC and that's what you can see here. So the next stage is to bring the HMI screens. So I'm going to go offline and then we're going to have a scroll down. We can minimize the PLC. This is the beauty of TIA portal. Everything's within one project. I'm not jumping from one screen to the next. I've still got my reference project open um, and there's a few bits that we have to look at here so let's let's get an idea of how this works first so again i don't need my plc we're on my hmi so we have my screens there's quite a few screens with the surex because you can program everything up but if you just want to bring back process values and diagnostics you just need that overview of a and b so let's bring that screen up so here you have your diagnostics and there's your, your values that links to a screen if you want to tear it via the HMI called Scale View 1. Now you'll see here there's only one value. So what it does is quite clever. It uses multiplexing on the tags. So if you come down to your HMI tags, you'll see a, uh, a load of internal tags. Okay. And then when I go to the properties on here, you'll see there's a in another internal multiplex tag which can either be set to zero or one if i go back to my overview screen where i've got both of my values if you look at the events when i press this button it sets the multiplex value to zero before it jumps to that screen and here it sets the multiplex value to one and that forces it then to use the actual tags that are connected to the instruments. So up here, it's like absolute addressing, and then down here, it's symbolic addressing. There is a, another bit in here, um, which you have to be careful of. Um, I don't really use these, but there are some Visual Basic scripts where it's doing something with the commands and, and a trend view. And we'll also have our alarm um, tags. So the first thing to do is start dragging and, and, and dropping these over. So we need our templates. So let's do that first. Sorry, let's make this. Okay. And we'll put these three templates into here. Then I need my um, tags. You have to be careful because under the default tag, look, there's some some here as well that needs to be dragged over. So we'll take that and that one, and we'll put those into our tags. Okay, and the Visual Basic scripts. And then the screens themselves. Which there are quite a few, so to, to keep things tidy, what I tend to do. add another group and I'll put all of these under there. Okay, and then we'll try compiling that. So we got a few errors and the likelihood cause of these errors is um, my version of TIA portal 
when I installed it I only installed the UK so these are um, buttons to, to other languages in the project so I'll just delete those of course you can enable that on your TIA portal installation I'm just being lazy so again one more compile okay so no errors no warnings and we save that so the last thing we need to do I'll just do another compile here okay the last thing we need to do is is put our runtime screen so so we can see it working this overview AB as our start screen so if you go to runtime settings and on the Cirrex right, so I've got a connection to the PLC again I need to just compile that save and then I'm going to run the, the simulator so make sure your settings on your PC PG interface are, are correct and what I'm looking for is we've got a connection and there is my load cell value coming back to see my diagnostics if I click on this button it takes me through to where I can program the um, sorry that's because I've got no power tags um, where I can program the and calibrate the load cell so if I want to zero it or tear it if I zero it so we're at zero okay um, uh, I've got other videos that you can watch on, on my channel that take you through how to, to program uh, the cards what I have noticed which is a little bit of an oversight I can't see a back button on here and this is the project online so once you get to this screen there's no way to go back to the previous screen so um, you, you would probably want to just put that in your project but um, as you can see we've now integrated the 522 dual channel I haven't got a load cell wired up to the second channel so there's no point in showing you that anyway but um, as long as you again you follow those those tips and um, keep the uh, symbolic uh, names the same as what you've got in the projects it goes as smoothly as that so thank you very much for listening and stay tuned for future blogs thank you